I cannot handle all of this bad gameplay this season. Just when it looks like it can't get any worse, they surprise me and get far, far worse. And I'm talking about every player this season. It starts with Corey in America, who got themselves into the situation that they got themselves in today, with America's target growing both overnight and this morning on all sides of the house. It is an America problem, and as much as her stands and the AmeriCorey stands want to, you know, cry about it, throw up about it, even try and get people kicked out of the house uh, because of it, the HOH himself, uh, it's America and Corey's fault that they're in this situation. They, they have not been a good duo because they do not play the same kind of game, and America is a, such a bad player this, in this game that she drags Corey down with the way she plays and tells people the wrong things and doesn't have a social game with anybody. This is not a, a new thing. I see her stands trying to make excuses that there's nothing she can do th this week because of the, the way she's being treated and the way people don't like her. People don't like her because of the way she's played this entire season. She has failed to make social connections since day one in this house. And that is why, at this point, she has nobody truly except for Corey. And she doesn't even have Corey, really. Corey's gone around throwing her name under the bus. Uh, that was part of their plan to try and not seem like a duo and throw each other, other under the bus. But then today, when the heat's on America, their plan goes out the window and they look like a bunch of liars because now they are trying to look out for each other again. So, yeah, bad gameplay there with those two. And Jared was upset when America was picked to play Vito because he's upset that America has been throwing competitions, which she has. You know, making that deal with Cameron has come back to bite her in the ass here. And uh, Corey himself also throws competitions. I think both of them think they're slick, but they're not slick when uh, Jared can see through that. Jared and Corey got into it. That's when uh, they were getting heated with each other because Jared was upset that America was picked because Jared wanted America to win veto. Uh, although, you know, Jared can't be that upset with America. He too had a chance to win veto. He too was in veto and Cameron beat both of them. Now, this is when Jared allegedly uh, said the R word about America. Uh, we didn't get to hear that, though. We don't know if that's 100% true. We just saw Jared apologizing to Corey for saying that about America. I know, and that that sends the stands into an uproar because, you know, every little word offends everybody. I said this yesterday that if you hate watch this show that much, you should not watch the season because this season's not even bad compared to most seasons. And I didn't watch Big Brother 21, and I didn't watch most of Big Brother 22 because I thought that it was too problematic and I hated the cast. So if you feel that way, you shouldn't be watching. So go watch Nickelodeon, like I said yesterday. And all these words getting thrown around as supposed hate speech. You know what also should be considered hate speech then? Is bitch. You know, where do we draw the line? Because that is derogatory towards women, but that gets used by everybody in that house. So there there needs to be a line in the sand and I think you all do way too much and you shouldn't be watching reality television if you're that sensitive. Now, Jared himself as HOH, he is being a big old baby. Throwing a tantrum today but before the veto because he was afraid of Cam winning and then Cam did win veto and then he was throwing a tantrum after veto not wanting to talk to anybody in his HOH room. Uh, it is because Jared now does have to get some blood on his hands this week. I it, I said this yesterday, it was the title of my video, that Jared did not need to win this HOH because of the kind of game he was playing. I never understand when the people that are trying to play all sides win HOH because it just makes your game worse or harder. It, it like exposes you to an extent. And that is now what is happening to Jared. So Jared's idea was to put up America against uh, Red, because Red is staying on the block, uh, and he, he wants America to go instead, because there has been this growing target for America. Even Jag thinks America should be going out of the house. Jag continued to play a really bad game last night, like I talked about yesterday. It's what he was doing coming back into the house. His 
bad gameplay has not changed since before he was evicted. I know he has that little trio alliance with um, <clears throat> Matt and Suri, but I don't think that is going to be a real thing because, you know, Suri has thrown out Jag's name to go up again this week, week possibly. But, you know, after Jared had a talk with America about her possibly going on the block she breaks down crying feeling sorry for herself trying to play the victim tears which I, I hate so much and the excuse that from Corey and herself that she's just too pretty for the house I hate when people say that in these games that people hate people because they're supposedly young and pretty not in this house you could say that about Taylor last year because the whole house hated her for no reason but every single person this season catches strays and shit talking from everyone. That's just the type of cast it is. And the shit talking, I think everybody gets their, their fair end of the deal. America is not a victim in that sense. America and Corey did this to themselves. But then, you know, the, there was good gameplay by Blue in that situation. You know, she's only been playing for two days now, but Blue has been doing, dare I say, good for two days. You know, it took her 28 days or more to start playing, but she has started to play and I kind of like some of this potential finally coming out. You know, at the beginning I was hoping we would see this potential from Blue and she never played, you know, but she kind of has the potential I thought maybe Jag would have. When Blue figured that Jared was only going to put up either Jag or America, Blue immediately threw America under the bus to protect Jag. That is that was the right thing to do for Blue's game because she is closer to um, Jag than she is to America. So I liked that from Blue. But then in comes Suri and Suri's idea this week to put up Bowie Jane instead. Like Jared said earlier today that the right thing to do is to take Bowie late in this, in this game. Like I said yesterday, Bowie is the perfect goat to drag to the end and get a win, in my opinion. And I don't see why nobody in this house sees that except for Jared now, uh, possibly. So I am glad that Jared sees that, but Suri wants to put her up now. So I don't think Suri wants Bowie to go home. It would just be a pun situation, but that is just so stupid of me. Suri should not want neither Red nor Bowie to go this week. For Suri's game, Getting rid of her numbers constantly doesn't make a lick of sense, and I really am tired of this from Suri, honestly. She is a great social player. Strategically, I, I don't get some of her decision making. Why would she want Red to go when he constantly would sacrifice a lot of his game for her? And yeah, you can make the argument, Suri has these connections with a lot of people throughout the house, and yeah, sure she does, but there is growing resentment against her from America, from Jag even, from Blue a little bit, even though Blue has that connection to Jared. And she has passed the test of Jared's about telling uh, her about his mother being in the house and Blue actually figuring out that it is Suri. So I, I still don't understand why Suri likes to target some of her own important numbers. Like sure, she could have all these numbers, but some to me are more important than others. and. Bowie going doesn't hurt as much, but I don't think Bowie would go home. Red going, I think, is very bad for Suri's game long-term wise. She is going to need numbers. If she's going to keep America in the house, I think that is a mistake. That's bad gameplay from Suri there. So that's not making a whole lot of sense to me. And then Jared's throwing out the last thing I saw that possibly Matt could be the pawn. He volunteered to possibly be pawn. So that's another person that would go up against Red, and then one of those two would go home. Either of those two going is terrible for Suri's game, in my opinion, long-term wise. I think she has important connections with both of those two that would help her game in the future. So I just don't understand it. It's, it's like Jared had the right idea to better his mother's game. It necessarily was maybe not the right choice to get America out for his game, but it was the right choice for Suri's game. But then hidden comes Suri, and she has this idea. I, I hate how Suri and Jared are playing. F 
They're not playing for themselves. Much like everybody in this game, they too are not playing for themselves. Suri's playing for Jared, and Jared's playing for Suri, at least in this instance. Not a lot of this game has he been playing for Suri. But in this instance, in his HOH, he was going to do that. But now, you know, this group of people gets HOH again, and they're just going to get rid of one of their own closest numbers, or at least one of Suri's closest allies. I don't like the gameplay from Suri here at all. I think it's bad for her game, and I think it should be called out as such. I know the stands are going to praise it because it's going to protect America, but it's it's bad gameplay from Suri for her own game there. But Red himself, you know, he was crying this week. It's going to be his birthday. He's going to be on the block on his birthday. At one point, it even sounded like he wants to go home this week, and now it's looking like he might get his wish. Him and Cameron have this beef, and... He's been throwing Cameron under the bus, but now he might go home. I It's just another week where I don't under, understand the gameplay from anyone. There is a total lack of logic this season that is getting way too frustrating for me because none of this gameplay makes any sense. It's once again, like I said, like last week about Corey's game, Suri here is now trying to make the game harder for herself long-term wise by getting rid of one of her allies that would be extremely loyal to her dumb um felicia today was telling everybody too much information izzy and mimi called her out on it she didn't like being called out on her own shit you know she likes to throw shit in the house but being called out on her own shit she didn't take that well she didn't seem to care about them calling her out but felicia might get her way this week. If anybody's going to get her way, it might be Felicia. She wants Red and Cameron broken up. So if Red has to go, then Red has to go. So I guess maybe that's a point to Felicia, even though she too is technically losing an ally in Red uh, there. But, you know, we still have a day and a half until the veto ceremony where Cameron will take himself off the block. There was also a thought of Suri trying to pull what she did on Eric and Survivor and get Cameron to use his veto on uh, Red, but Felicia ruined that by being the spokesperson to try and get Cameron to do that and giving up on that idea in about a second. So that was dumb of Felicia. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go back and forth for the next day and a half about who's really gonna be the renom. Suri's pushing for Bowie. Jared came up with a, this idea of Matt and like this, 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 these people always do. Jared already went and told America she's safe now, but will they flip back and, and put her up? I wouldn't be surprised because they do this, this a lot. They never take the time in between game talks before moving on to a new idea too quickly. It's just such a messy cast for some of the right reasons, but a lot of the wrong reasons strategic wise though. They all suck. 